Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today uh, for the DGCBC's eighth Just Watch Us chat. Uh, my name is Kendra Upton, and I'm the executive director of the DGCBC. Before I introduce our very special guests, I would like to acknowledge the traditional Indigenous lands that we all live in on today. Although this meeting is online and our event takes place at many locations across the country, we each still enjoy the pleasure of living within an Indigenous territory. So as a gesture of our appreciation for our use of those lands, I would like to ask each of us to offer a positive thought for the local Indigenous people and a hope for their health and wellness during this uncertainty. If you're interested in learning on which territory you live and work, you can visit the Native Land Digital website for more information. So we're very fortunate today to be joined by a group of incredibly accomplished uh, guests and some of my former colleagues from the iconic television series and one of my favorites to work on ever, Bates Motel, and I'm not just saying that because they're all here listening. <laughs> these, <laughs> these talented folks have moved on since I had the pleasure of working to excel as showrunners and directors, and today they will discuss with all of us the crucial relationship between director and showrunner on episodic TV. So to begin with, I'm very pleased to introduce Emmy-nominated showrunner and producer Carrie Aaron. Hi. Some of the past credits include Boston Legal, Friday Night Lights, Parenthood, and of course, Bates Motel. Currently, Carrie is the showrunner for the fantastic Apple Plus program titled The Morning Show, which I personally loved, by the way. With Carrie today is Tucker Gates, a television director and producer of such groundbreaking work as Alias, Lost, House of Park and Re Parks and Rec, and of course, Bates Motel and The Morning Show. Roxanne Dawson is also with us, perhaps familiar to many of you as Bilana Torres on Star Trek Voyager. Also, a <laughs> you don't ever Former get that, producer. right? <laughs> <laughs> Performer, producer, and director. Her directing credits include Heroes, Scandal, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., This Is Us, and Surprise, also Bates Motel and The Morning Show. So welcome to all of you, and I want to take a quick moment to say hi, a personal hi to you guys. It's been way too long. Hi. Um, I'd normally offer to take you out for a drink, but that's probably not going <laughs> to happen here. I know. Well, I'll just say thank you for joining us, and I, I acknowledge that this kind of a setting is probably what uh, has contributed to making this high-powered panel so uh, happen, so thank you. So before we start, I'd like to introduce our moderator for day today, the DGCBC's own Jem Gerard. Jem is the creator and showrunner of the hit space opera and Queen for Sci-Fi, an Emmy-nominated director and five-time Leo Award winner her past projects include Android Employed, Mac X4, Killer High, and You, Me, Her. So without further ado, Jem, take it away. And I'm going to let myself be demoted to an observer. All right. Thanks, Kendra. Cheers. Thank you. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. Uh, it's so cool to have all three of you uh, here today. Um, and we'll jump, we'll jump right in. So... Yeah, the relationship between a, a director and a showrunner is is a unique one on on the on set, and uh, it seems like it's working well for you guys, right? You, you've all done Bates together and the Morning Show, so you know something's working out well there. Um, Carrie, let's let's jump in with you. Uh, you know, from kind of the beginning of a project, you've, you've got a new show, you've set up your room, and now you're creating the list. Um, you know, who's, who's the best kind of directors to, to, to pull off this show? How do you, what's that, the beginning process of like, uh, of that for you? Um, well, the, I usually come in after the list is put together because this is the truth about me. I had the first real production uh, experience I had was on Bates Motel. I was always a writer before that. I didn't go to film school. I didn't, I didn't get in through knowing production. I knew nothing about production as Tucker will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I really came in at, at the point where, where <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> I came in at the point where, um, you know, Carlton would, would have ideas for directors, Tucker would have ideas for directors. So that was how that got started in, on Bates. Um, now, I'm more, I'm more active in it, but still Mimi Leader is my producing director and, you know, she's a brilliant woman and I, you know, she, she uh, usually brings director ideas to me. So, I, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's how that list starts. Um, I'd love to say that I sit at home and generate it, but I don't want to start out by lying to you. 
Well, no, well, that's what we wanted, your honesty. So, yeah. okay, do so you have someone that sort of helps kind of uh, put those lists together for you? Um, the producing director, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and obviously, like, then then you start looking at their work if you don't know them. Um, you, you know, like Roxanne, for instance, I had, I was working with a writer at the time who had worked with her and just said she was brilliant and we would be so lucky to get her. So word of mouth is huge. You know, yeah. if, you have a, if you have a trusted um, colleague who, you know, is smart and you get them and they get you and they're like, this person is brilliant and you're going to love them, then that's usually a good, a good beginning. Um, yeah. And other times, like, um, tell me if I'm talking too much. We want to hear this. At any time. <laughs> um, other times, like when it, when we were looking for a director for Bates Motel, and um, I really had had very little experience looking for directors at that point, and Carlton had had mentioned Tucker because he loved his work on Lost, and um, I we were looking at a lot of different people, and I really I just remember. Um, there was something in Bates that, that I really wanted, which was like this beautiful romance. And mm. I remember looking at like this one director and it was like, he was good, but it's like, I felt claustrophobic when I looked at his stuff. And there, it was like, everybody made me uncomfortable. And then, I, <laughs> and then I looked at Tucker's stuff and it was like, it was, it was just beautiful and sweeping. And it had like this largeness, this grandness to it, but also really human. And yeah. so really, so much of the time, because I don't, I'm, I'm not a film school person. I, I can't be like, oh, I like that shot. Like, I can tell when something sure. looks pretty, you know, or looks good or is arresting, but mostly I go off of feelings. And I had a feeling when I watched Tucker that he embodied what this version of, of, of Norman Bates needed, you know? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And, and Jim, I, I saw the, the pilot of Bates, and I have never done this before, ever. I picked up the phone the minute that I it stopped, it ended, and called my manager and just <laughs> do whatever you can to get me on the show. I said, <laughs> right. no way. I love it. it was so beautiful, Tucker. It was yeah. like, I just looked at this and I said, I, I haven't seen this before, and this is like, it's my vibe. This is like, I love this. So I've never yeah. done this before. And uh, I thank God that, you guys yeah no, that's, uh, that's awesome and what a great phone call to make because you you did uh two episodes yourself right yes yeah oh yeah, uh, yeah. And so, fantastic episodes too one of them yeah was the hardest effing episode because it was all it was all in a sheriff station and i remember oh, yeah, yeah, i remember yeah, thinking cool. when i gave the script to the writer uh that they, i was like if they can pull this off they're a genius and it was alexander yeah. Cunningham, and she is a genius and yeah. she wrote a beautiful script and then i was like god help the director on this and and because it, it really was a tiny building like it was not yeah, like a big much of a set yeah and yeah. she it was an amazing episode amazing yeah. it, was, it was so beautifully done yeah. So you, you just mentioned, uh, Carrie, in that, um, you know, leaning on your producing director as well. And, and obviously yep. a big part of that relationship with the showrunner and your producing director who's directing your, your pilot is sort of creating that visual language together. So what, what's yeah. that process like for you? And, and, and it's, um, particularly with, uh, with Bates Tucker, you mm -hmm. two sort of working on what were the, those initial conversations like and how did you sort of, um, kind of take uh, uh, Carrie's vision and, and create that visual language for, for the shot. And Carlton's vision. I have to, I, Car I co-created it with Carlton Hughes. So, yes, yeah. yes, and Carlton, yes. He's a huge I mean, I think we just that. had, from the start, we just had a great relationship. But, you know, I think, I mean, the thing about Bates was we had a certain iconic or, you know, look to it, not the look, but we had certain iconic elements that we had to incorporate with what we were doing. Um, there was a really fun, kind of sense I got from the script um, that, you know, that one, we were doing this very intimate mother-son story, but also we were doing this thing that was kind of timeless and that if we could create an environment that you couldn't even, you know, that was modern, but you couldn't tell whether it was modern or not, you know, 
then it would be really fun. And I was just really, you know, we'd have to play a little bit with the Hitchcock, you know, vibe, but I didn't want to be married to it because I didn't want to, like I was intimidated by it to a certain degree and I didn't want to just do bad Hitchcock. I wanted to do something that was its own thing, you know? And then, yeah. so we tried to find that. And um, I mean, it's all such a big collaborative work. And if you're fortunate enough to, you know, work with someone like Carrie or Roxanne, you know, that then you can have a dialogue all through the process. And as a producing director, you know, I always feel like I'm sort of the liaison to try and cement the relationship between the director and the writer, you know, and, and sort of try and push the script as it moves through the production process, you know, and has to adapt to the limits or the challenges that you have in production, you know, and try and get it to a place where, you know, it, it, it all fits and, and use that process also, you know, to kind of hone the script so that it can be as strong as it can be, you know, mm -hmm. when you go to camera. And that, I think, you know, as a director coming in, it's like the best thing you can do is somehow create that channel with the showrunner, you know, so that she, she or he has trust in you and, and mm -hmm. that's by bringing ideas that you think are really strong for the script and, and you know, trying to embellish it a little bit in ways that are sort of right for the show and, and, and also bringing up issues where you feel like maybe there's a little bit too much exposition somewhere or there's, you know, something that isn't right, quite right for a character. And, just, and, and do it by just asking questions rather than saying, you know, this sucks, you know, or I can't do this or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And have solutions, you know? And... and you know, I think that's solutions is a big thing. That's yeah, like, yeah. That is, that's like a that's such a blessing when you're working with um, a director who is challenging something, but they don't really have an i they don't really have a better idea. You know, yeah, that's the worst place. That's a to tough be. conversation. <laughs> well, it, yeah. I think it's a, just a horrible place to be because your job isn't to just say this this stinks. Your your job is to try and you know, like if I have an issue with a script, then I want to have at least an idea of what that solution might be, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and if it doesn't fly, then it doesn't fly. And then, you know, there's also that part of the process as a director, especially in episodic, where you then you have to just let go and just say, okay, then let's go with this and let's dig deeper. And maybe I'm not quite seeing what I need to see within the scene, you know, and maybe there's yeah. something that I haven't quite realized yet, you know, and maybe, or maybe I'm scared of the scene a little bit. And that's why I'm, you know, bringing up my husband's season. So, if, you know, you have to deal with all those different things, you know, so yeah. that you stay open and you create a collaborative, co collaborative relationship, you know. Yeah, and you, you hit on a, a key point there as well. Um, Sounds like, Kerry, you, you want those, you want that collaborative relationship, but it's all about those solutions as well. And you're open to hearing those if the director can, can bring those solutions yeah. to the table. And it's about chemistry too. I mean, yeah, it's, totally. it's, yeah, it really yeah. is. It's like dating. It's like either you're going to hit yeah. it off in your sensibilities and you're, you know, you're going to want to talk about scenes with this person and you're going to get excited together or you're yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Chatting, chatting. About, I like that. It, it is about a chemistry, like a, a like dating. And so, yeah. um, what are some of the, you obviously know when it's working and when you're on the same page, what are, what are some of the things that, you know, when you know it's not working, there's some sort of, I guess, some experiences with a, with a director that don't work. Yeah. What I, not to do? I, I feel like it is more of a, um, well, the first, the first and hardest thing is if I don't feel welcome uh, to the director, like if I feel like they're kind of tolerating me yeah, <laughs> because they have to, <laughs> you know, that's, that's never a fun thing. Um, and yeah. then, uh, I mean, generally though, that's not the case. Generally people are pretty collaborative and open. Um, yeah. but I think, I think that it really is, I mean, I love, I think a lot of it is people who have joy in what they do and that you share the joy of it with them as opposed to people who are kind of like, this is a pain in the ass and that's the pain in the ass. And, you know, it's like, you wanna feel excited about what you're creating together. And I know production can be a gigantic pain in the ass, 
And I know, like, I'm the, the person who's, like, sitting in my pajamas, writing it in my bedroom, and then, you know, a whole crew is up at five in the fucking morning in the snow, and, <laughs> you know, I get it, the, the, you know, but, but you still, you want to be, you want to be, like, connected to that director and the joy of what you're making together. And yeah. It's really absolutely. meaningful. It's a really meaningful relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that, that is half the battle is if you, if you come into it enthusiastically and you come into it with a lot of passion and ideas, yeah. and yeah. You, you can go a long way, you know, especially if you're willing to also listen at the same time, you know, to what yes. people are you yeah. know, yeah. along to you. I think where, you know, it goes wrong a lot is, is either like if it gets very self-indulgent, you know, if, if a director just is kind of into their shots, you know, and not yeah. kind of aware of what's going on, you know, with the looking cast. at the big picture and what the story is and what they're really, you know, they're more, you know, interested in doing some, something that's very sort of specific and not, mm -hmm. you know, not with the larger picture, you know, and, and, and yeah. then the other thing where it doesn't work and, and this is where like Roxanne is so good. is like, it's just the relationship of the director with the cast. It's such a big thing. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, Can the director, that's, you know, walk onto a set with actors who've been with the characters for two seasons and, and still have a conversation with them and, you know, and still, you know, and excite them and feel like not only they're doing something, you know, interesting and they're pushing the material and they're being listened to and recognized and respected, you know, with their own things that they're bringing to it, but, but also that, you know, they're organized so that it can move on and it can move on yeah. at a, you know, at a, at a good pace, you know, so that everyone feels like you're getting the work done. Yeah, absolutely. That's so key as well. The director, yeah, no, for a director that's coming in on just various episodics throughout the year versus a director producer when you're staying with one yeah. show for the whole year. Um, those directors that are moving through all the different kinds of shows have to respect the visual language that has been um, created before them, mm -hmm. but yet still be willing and excited about putting their stamp on, on the show. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But without that respect, without really studying the show, without, in my opinion, looking at every single episode and, and, and asking questions like, <laughs> which ones do you think worked best and why? You know, so that you, because ultimately you're fulfilling your boss's vision mm -hmm. with your own input. You know what I mean? There's, and there's, um, that requires a respect for the show that you're working on and, a, and a, really an intimate knowledge of, of the visual language that has been preceded. Yeah. Through. Yeah. And yeah. Finding, a place, finding a place where maybe you can bring something to it that hasn't been brought to it. Like, you know, can I take what they've been doing in this language that's been being used and kind of expand it a little bit, you know, or, or make yeah. it my own, like, what do I bring to it? And that's what I look for. Like when you're trying to find a director, you know, find somebody who's got a story that they want to, that, you know, that they bring to the. That uh, they can bring their own creativity yeah, that was so in your vision. So. Yeah, because it is like a grind doing 12 episodes of something or 22 yeah. episodes or something. And, and you want somebody who's, who's bringing something to the party and not just, yeah. not just a student of the show, but somebody who has something that, that can actually like you know, add to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it Absolutely. really is like you could, you, 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 it's always changing and it's always growing. And when you get people who bring a new, life to it it's really exciting yeah 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 for sure uh just a quick note to those watching uh i've just been reminded that if you uh, attended if you got some uh questions you can fill out the q a at the bottom i've just been asked to remind you of that um cool so yeah roxanne you you, you touched on uh some important points there um as you know when you're coming in as a director uh, for a few episodes on this already established show, um, there's a lot of catching up to do and you'll sort of consume everything you, you, you can about the show to get on the same page. And obviously, Tucker, you've been there sort of more from, on Bates, for example, from the beginning, right? So that sort of, uh -huh. um, that collaboration and has been there earlier. So as a director coming on for a few episodes, Roxanne, what's that process like working with the showrunner in terms of, you know, Chat me through like uh, those tone meetings and, and things like that. How do you guys work together to make sure that you that you are on the same page? Well, I think it's um it's communication. I think it's 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 being open to everything. It's a uh, it's number one. Hopefully, you're excited about the show that you're doing. You've read the scripts. You've seen something. You know, 
that you go, okay, I'm connecting to this. And that's the reason that you chose to do this job, you know, once you've been accepted to do it. So you already have a certain amount of, of wanting to, you know, contribute your, your input to this. And then mm -hmm. you get the actual episode and you, within, like, within that style, within what you've seen before, you try to add in what, what you can bring to the table that's unique and can elevate the script. But I think it's really important. Like one of the first things that I try to do, um, even though it's not in the, uh, in the prep meetings normally, is I ask for almost as soon as possible a script meeting with the writers, with anybody who can answer questions. And it's really kind of a page turner going, do I understand you here? Or what does this mean? Or, you know, mm -hmm. I like to get real, as early, you only have seven days for the most yeah. part, you know, to prep. And so the sooner yeah. you can get on the same page, the sooner you can contribute. So I, I ask for that almost immediately. I just want to have a relationship with the writers like from the get-go and not at the tone meeting, which is usually at the very end of that process, <laughs> coming up with these questions and you start shooting tomorrow. Yeah, that's a really important point, actually. Often those tone meetings are quite late. And by that point, you've kind of got this idea of how you're going to execute the scene. And then that meeting might change all of that at times, right? I mean, so yeah, it still might, but <laughs> even with all of these, you have to be open to everything. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carrie, you mentioned something really interesting earlier on about um, you know when you're looking for directors, it's often when you're watching their previous work, it's how how it makes you feel rather than a necessarily a stylistic yes. choice that they have. Um, yeah, yeah. So when you're are you, when you're sort of considering directors, what is it for you in terms of their previous experience? Is it, um, are you looking for previous episodic work that they've done or is it more just their general portfolio and a sort of vibe that they give? I mean, I always love looking at original work. This is true of writers too. I like, I like looking at something that's completely from their own brain as much as possible. Yeah. And then it's also really helpful to look at an episodic to see how they interpreted it, you know, and, and, um, because that's also oh. part of the skill, you know, is taking, taking something that exists and, and, and doing that while bringing right. yourself to it. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, so let's chat a little bit about, um, we've got uh, a lot of, uh, our um, viewers now are some have episodic um, experience and some are kind of trying to make that leap into episodic from maybe some indie projects, uh, uh, indie features or short films. Um, what uh, what were you, what Tucker and, and Roxanne? You both had you both have sort of, uh, different backgrounds in getting into episodic work, which is really interesting. Uh, can you chat to me a little bit about? about your unique kind of um, journey into, into getting into episodic television? We'll start with, you want to start with uh, Tucker? Um, yeah, I mean, mine was um, sort of classic Hollywood. I started in, uh, I didn't go to film school either. Carrie and I share that. <laughs> um, we, uh, I started in the mailroom of a production company when I was 21, worked my way oh, up right. the mailroom. And worked in the editing rooms for a while, as, you know, just like a PA assistant, and then on sets as a PA and assistant, and just worked at a company that, you know, gave me shots to direct, you know, sort of inserts and second units and things like that. So I learned camera and, and then just, you know, got episodics. I don't know that that kind of path still exists anymore, you know, um, yeah. Mm. But that's the way I did it. And um, now I think, you know, back then, you know, I, I made a short film while I was a PA, but it was very expensive to make because we had to rent cameras and get film processed and, you know, all that kinds of thing. And now it's so easy, you know, to make something that's original. I, I, I always say to younger people who are trying to direct is like that you either you just should be as prolific as possible you know, mm -hmm. and just producing stuff, you know, and, and be at whatever level, if the friend's directing or, you know, to help them, if, if, you know, you're directing, direct or write, you know, and, and I think writing is one of the best ways to get there because then you have a little bit of control over, you know, kind of what your path trajectory is. And if you have something that people like, you know, then all of a sudden you've got a project that's going and then maybe you're directing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, Roxanne, um, 
you obviously have uh, many acting credits before you broke into uh, directing, and it was um, it was uh, Voyager, right, that gave you your first episode. Is that um, was there anything else before that, or it was you you seen so many directors doing it, and 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 they gave you a shot on this on Voyager? Is that uh, is that right? No, that's where I began. Um directing for television and I, I didn't go to film school either so you've got three people <laughs> um, but I did graduate with a degree in theater arts which I'm sure my parents were really happy about um, uh, but I did uh, I did right away start working in the theater and in New York and so that's my background I actually never thought that I would ever be an actor in film and television because to be honest with you at that time when I was working there really wasn't anybody that looked like me on TV. I mean, I just, I didn't, unless I was playing, you know, um, a gang person or a maid, I just, I, you know, and I didn't have the accent. And I mean, right now there are so many um, possibilities open for, uh, you know, women who are ethnic to have leading roles. And to be, but for young people, that actually wasn't the case, you know, at least when I was growing up. And so I figured I'd stay in theater for the rest of my life where it's, you could do anything and you could be anybody. And I love theater. I was a member of Circle Repertory um, in New York. I also wrote a little bit. I love directing though. I love directing in the theater and, and directed short pieces in the lab. So when I finally got cast as on television as an alien, because I guess I can play an alien as a Puerto Rican. Um, so, um, <laughs> but also she's half human and half Klingon. So I, even yeah. then, it was a very kind of crazy experience. You know, I, I spent more time on the set looking at the directors and trying to understand what this was that I was so attracted to. So I learned just hanging around. I, I, I went to, um, uh, to my, uh, to my bosses and said, I'm really interested in directing and then kind of spent all my time on the set with a shadow on other sets, anything that was shooting at Paramount, which became my school. I was in all sorts of meetings. Um, I just started to make little shorts, you know, on my own on the mm. weekend. And I just began to, to learn and to spend time. And finally they gave me a shot at directing, um, which I hated actually directing and acting on the same show. Some people can do that. Well, I, I don't. Um, but uh, it went pretty well and I ended up really loving it. And then they gave me another. And then I went on to Enterprise, which was the next Star Trek show. I directed about 11 episodes there and then got my first network show, which was huge, you know, which was on Crossing Jordan. I ended up being a producer director on that, which I did for three other shows. So I was able um, to sort of have that experience of what it is to stay with a show for an entire season, as well as moving from show to show. So yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, and ever since then, um, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. I mean, you, as, as an actor, you, you, you know, probably had, you had a chance to work with so many uh, different directors as well. And I'm always, um, I always love chatting to uh, directors who have that acting background because um, there must be so much that you were able to kind of observe and witness and, and, and learn from. And then obviously things probably, you know, not to do and, and that you realized didn't work. Was there, um, was there a lot in your background that you, that you uh, kind of, um, you know, observing other directors that helped in your, in your directing career? Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I ate it up. I mean, I learned from every single experience and every single director, you know, I would watch sometimes directors paint themselves into corners and I would go, sometimes the next day I would go into editing and, and look at what they shot. I would do, list before I got there of how I would shoot a day and then I'd watch how the director shot it and then go in. So I kind of created my own school uh, to understand. But I think the biggest thing was the relationship between the directors and, and actors. And sometimes it truly is almost like Carrie was talking about. It's like this either chemistry, sometimes an actor will write off a director almost immediately. And then it's up to the director to either figure out how to resolve that um, that relationship, which may or may not have anything to do with who they are, you know, it just is what it is. And, um, and sometimes they can, and sometimes, sometimes they can't, but you have to learn how to sort of push, push through those things as well. I look back at myself yeah. as an actor. I was very judgmental about the directors that I worked with. I've been paid back. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> paid back. I, really? you know, I think back on certain 
attitudes that I it's just it's kind of amazing because as an actor you have to be so myopic, you know, that you really you end up being more selfish than I think you need to be, not always, but I mean yeah. in that you know, every actor has his or her process, you know. So it's yeah it's fascinating to try to to figure that out and to yeah. the process. You know, I think yeah, picking up on what Roxanne said, it's like, I think the shadowing process is, is one of the most, like recently with directors who've shadowed, you know, I almost always have a shadow when I direct. And I think that recently the shadow process has been really, really fruitful for a lot of these directors who've shadowed, you know, I can, there's three or four of them that have shadowed me that are now have their own careers and not because they shadowed me, but they've shadowed me as well as other people. And they did exactly what Roxanne was saying, which is, you know, go to set every morning, you know, with the way that, you know, having studied the scenes that were going to be shot that day with a plan of how they would do it and then yeah, watch yeah. how it happens and unfolds on set and, and, and always be asking questions. And for me, it's great because I'm always, you know, somebody's always yeah. asking, why'd you do that? And then I have to think about why I did it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's... It's like, but it's super yeah. fun. And, and I think it's really informative because I think the first time you walk on a set as a director, it's so intimidating. You have like 60 people standing behind you and you think every decision and every element has to go through you, which is not really true, but it, it, it but you feel that way. And, and it's really, it's, it's, it's easy to get overwhelmed by it. Yeah. Well, that, that's, um, that kind of leads me on to a, a topic I wanted to talk about, which was sort of advice to kind of, um, you know, break into episodic directing. So it sounds like you, you're a fan of of the shadowing um, uh, the shadowing process. Do you think that there should be kind of a limit to that on directors? You know, there's sort of um, is it um, you know should they only kind of shadow one or a few shows? Otherwise, they're sort of forever seen as those sort of in training directors. What what would your advice be on that? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I only know I've never sort of felt that. I mean, I. I mean, I, I would never look at a director who's trying to get a break and say, oh, you shadowed too many times, you know? Okay. Well, that's <laughs> I mean, good. No, that's good to hear. That's de I mean, definitely good for a lot of bad directors to hear. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. I think the process when you do shadow also is a way to network and it's a way to meet people and it's a way to, you know, and if you have that same enthusiasm and that same, you know, it's like dating as well. It's like, you know, if you stick around next to a director for, you know, the three weeks process that you've gone through and, and you get along well and, and you know, they, the director likes your ideas and, and you have this really great dialogue, then, you know, I know plenty of directors who've then taken chances on that director and said, you know, listen, yeah. let's, let's, let's bring this person on because they, they seem like they're really sharp. They're, they're really studied in it. They're really into what they're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a um, um, mentorship program too with the yeah. DA and I've been involved um, with the last couple of years. So I've had, uh, two different mentees and my first one's gone on to do like um, amazing things but I basically outside of our meetings um, you know I would have them shadow my work but also be there on call for them as they were going through their first jobs like exactly. they, went through the, they went through an emotional experience sort of having some issues with somebody on set and they call me wherever and say how do I handle this you know and you're no. there for them to helpfully help guide them through their early experiences. You know, um, there's just so many wa wonderful, young, talented um, directors out there. I was very inspired by the, um, by this uh, mentorship program at the, at the DGA. Yeah. And I, I feel like there's, um, you know, we, we have a lot of good people coming up. A lot of good people. Yeah. And, and there's more than that program. There's programs everywhere. Like Ryan Murphy has a good one and that some of the networks have them as well. And, mm -hmm. There, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you you all did Bates together, and then uh, most recently together, you've all done uh, the morning show, which um, my wife and I binged in like a weekend. Um, <laughs> loved it. Um, really great show. And um, Kerry, when you were sort of uh, putting that team together, um, you know, obviously you've had, you've worked with Roxanne and, and Tucker before, were they, were they directors you had in mind? And sort of when you're putting that, uh, that, uh, that team together, are you kind of thinking mostly of relationships you already have and, or um, for new talent to, to pull in as well? I think both. I mean, I think, you know, you can't, 
I, I think it's both. I think you want to, you know, support relationships that have worked for you and people that you think are talented. And you also, it's really exciting, I think, to um, give someone a chance. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Roxanne, you mentioned um, you had called Kerry or you'd call your, your agents called uh, the, the bait team as soon as you'd seen that, um, that pilot, which is, I, which is great and I think that's awesome and I love that attitude on like I love this I want to I want to be part of this um do you either of you have other sort of um advice and tips for sort of uh, getting known to a showrunner well to a showrunner um that it depending upon how a show is constructed I mean how it's run production wise isn't that isn't always the person that you're going to be communicating with. It will pr be probably a, a producer director who will then either interview you or talk to you, or, you know, um, and then from there you're onto the set. And then when you're sitting in meetings, you will, the showrunner will be there, but it's not really, that's not really, in my opinion, the first, um, point of contact unless there's a personal relationship there. Do you agree with me, Tucker? I do, yeah. yeah it's, it's not really the first contact that you would have, I think, going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. um, Carrie, is there anything um, that you found to be a, um, a consistent uh, kind of note or conversation that you, that you have, uh, whatever production you're on with your directors? Um, I, really, yeah, I mean, I really like to break down the psychology of scenes. Yeah. So that is just really important to me to be like, here's the intention. They're saying this, but they mean that. Like all those little moving parts in a scene is very, very important to me. So I do a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. And it's so helpful as a director, you know, to have someone that does that because, I mean, really in some ways what, you know, because the structure of the show is, is set in a certain way. What you're trying to do is mine those moments as much as you can, you know, out of a scene. Yeah. And so, you know, if you can get someone like Carrie who does that so well, you know, it, it's really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Roxanne, what was, what's your experience uh, been with that, with um, uh, particularly working with Carrie on, on those shows? What, uh, what kind of conversations do you find um that you are often having with your showrunners well i think it it like it, it does vary that relationship with the showrunner but what i've loved about working with carrie is is what is, carrie what you just said is asking these questions that layer the characters you know and just uh really trying to understand what's happening beneath the surface and allow that to bubble up and make sure that you know you're getting the reaction shots or you're getting that that you know you're getting all of the subtext in there that that is not on the surface and to be honest with you a lot of scripts don't have that there are a lot of writers that can't mm. that don't write like that and sometimes yeah. uh, our job as directors is either to try to find that in there especially when a showrunner is not specific and the writing is not as great you try to either find that in there or do shiny object over here and try to take their attention away from the fact that the scene is really not making any sense, you know? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's our job to basically, as we said in the beginning, find solutions and make it work no matter what. So you're just blessed when you've got somebody who actually can answer those questions and really tear apart all of those, tear down all those layers and just peel the onion away till you get at the core of the character. And then there isn't any question that an actor can ask you that you won't have the answer to you know because you really examined it from all sides yeah yeah that's a really good point um so what's um okay I, I get a lot of um a lot of booking new shows and getting hired is all about those uh relationships that you build obviously with the showrunner as well and with the 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 network uh as well do you guys have any sort of stories or or um, advice in, in when you are a director for hire and coming on a show to sort of maintain those relationships? Maintaining the relationship when you've worked on the show? 
Yeah, or um, yeah, with with both I mean, the showrunner you know, and the network itself, you know. Yeah, I feel like at least from my side of it, so much of it has to do with how the, how the work turned out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's everything. You know? a good show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and get hired again. You like the episode? They're coming back, kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because, yeah. Like if yeah, if you and they're fun to work with, and they're great to work with, and they're smart, and it's a great episode. Like, why wouldn't they yeah. come back? You know. And there's really yeah. no scenario other than that. We'd be like, well, the episode sucked, but I really liked them. I really them. liked them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or it came you know, in on like, budget, yeah. <laughs> it really does. It's about. I would, I would say, like, too, like, I would, like, I would, I, I mean, then maybe this is, you know, I don't know, my failing, but I don't really worry about the network very much. I mean, I think it's just yeah. about, you know, the people that you're working with and, okay. and how that's going. And, and if you do a great show and it's your job to kind of fight to make that show great, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to get a mediocre script because you can turn it into something, you know, better, you know, so I've had yeah. some scripts that were at the read through, they were fantastic. And then they turned out to not be so good on film and you're like, Oh shit, you know, yeah. but you know, yeah. I think it's, it's just about being present and just being there, it, it, you know, things move so quickly. And if you can kind of just stay focused and, and open to what's happening around you, whether it's your relationship with the showrunner or your relationship with the actors or the DP or whoever it is, then, you know, something good's going to happen, you know? And, mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I, I agree with Carrie too. It's like, I mean, I look at people's films when I'm trying to look at director, but I, I, I think more than anything, I, I listen to other people that they've worked with. Okay, so yeah, that's a big part of it is, is calling yeah, up for those call recommendations. Up. Sometimes a show can be really great and the director not so good because there's just yeah. few people around them, you know, or, they, or you know, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to yeah. tell sometimes, yeah. you know, especially in the episodic world, you know, um, necessarily what's going on from seeing episodes and 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 but you really learn a lot just by you know especially if it's somebody that you respect or you've worked with yourself or you know you know that you can talk to um yeah makes a difference yeah i think what's um what's really uh cool about having all three of you here as well uh is that we've um especially with space we've you've got we've got our showrunner and producing director and roxanne a director came on for a few episodes so the three of you working together, I'd love to chat about um, in that show. Was it sort of, you know, um, you know, Roxanne, were you sort of working with Tucker more on a sort of making sure you maintain that visual language and, and Kerry was very much story? Or was it very, uh, the three of you was a complete collaborative experience? I'd love to sort of hear about more about the three of you working together on that. I think I was directing when you were prepping, so I think you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I think that I think that's actually, and actually, I don't think that I think Carrie, we were in Los Angeles. Angeles. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we were both in phone. Yeah, it was like uh, FaceTime and, and yeah, the phone. You know yeah. how mm. kind of it is. Um, but so um, there wasn't a, a huge amount of interaction, but what there was yeah. was important. You know, I mean, I can go to Tucker and ask very specific uh, questions yeah. about. Uh, you know, how should I approach this? If I have a, a question about such and such, what's the best way to to get an answer to that question? Or, you know, and yeah. he's always, uh, you know, as a liaison between me and everybody else, because I'm the odd man out, I'm the new one there, right? Um, there, every, there's a different hierarchy for every show. There's different right. ways to approach getting an answer. And so mm -hmm. Tucker could give me what the route in order to, you know, yeah, or sometimes take it to like be the messenger, like kind of, you know, so that you don't have to be that person, you know, and like I can go in and, you know, try and right. make something happen, you know, um, so that you can concentrate on directing and I can be the bad cop or whatever, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can, okay. you know, I can do that a little bit too, you know, but I, I think that's true. Um, like with a producer director, it's, it's really helpful if you have one that's involved because I think you can really get a lot of information out of them, you know, in terms yeah. of how the set works, what, you know, what kind of, you know, what, you know, I was thinking about this kind of thing. What do you think about that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. All those things Bounce like those that. creative ideas off of Carrie. Did you say you're sort of not you like on set usually you, you sort of, you stay in the writer's room 
do you visit? No, no, much? it's just that Bates was filmed in Vancouver and I live in Los Angeles. So the writer's offices and posts were in Los Angeles. So I had to communicate either, you know, through like doing what we're doing right now or, mm. you know, but I talked to Tucker all the time, which was yeah. great. I mean, Tucker was like the, uh, you know, my lifeline to production. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're painting it worked out really well, actually. I mean, it, it was, really, well. it was, it was, it worked out really well. Yeah. It was super. Yeah. Fun. Uh, Tucker, I, my, my sister will get really mad at me if I don't ask you about this, but, uh, you, you've, uh, you've got, both of you have phenomenal uh, resumes, um, but uh, I think her favorite episode of TV ever, and my favorite episode of The Office, is uh, Threat Level Midnight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was? I just have to ask what that was like. I just and found. You went... I just. I was cleaning out the garage, and I just found a poster to the the Threat Level Midnight poster signed by the. No cat. way. And awesome. my boys have it. My boys, they're 13 and 10. They're huge Office fans. It's so crazy. Yeah. That show yeah, that goes on and on. It's yeah. like Dang. all of my kids, like, I think it's my daughter's favorite show. Yeah. My, I think oh, really? my 10-year-old yeah. lives by it. Like, I think that's how he makes decisions in life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, it was fun. It's real. Listen, working on that show was, I mean, in, in some ways, I mean, obviously they're very different shows, but in some ways the same because the cast on both shows was always there and so present and so talented, you know, that it's your job to really almost be a cheerleader. You know, it's like, I mean, it's a little bit more on Bates, you know, in terms of you having to drive the camera and, you know, and all that, but the images, but, you know, in both, you know, it's like a never say no kind of set, you know, you just have to have ideas and, and directing yeah. comedy is so different from directing and, in in drama like in drama you know you're really setting tone and 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 modulating performance and and in i find like on those sets like parks and rec in the office that it was more about pitching like you know they'd run it they'd run it a few times and then you got to pitch a new way to do it pitch a new line pitch a new you know idea you know and and they're always want they always want to play and they're yeah the, the actors are upset if you move on too quickly, you know, without having sort of played enough, you know, and yeah. that's, that's super fun. But, but those those yeah. scenes get shot so quickly because you shoot both sides at once that you can do a, you know, page and a half scene in a half an hour. And for me, that took a lot of getting used to because all of a sudden yeah. the scene would be gone and I'd be like, holy shit, did we, did we get that? You know? Yeah. Whoa, you know, um, but at the same time, since the cameras never stopped rolling, we had done 10 or 12 takes. So it, it's just a totally different, you know, thing, but it's super, yeah. I mean, working with yeah. Steve there, like when I got to the morning show, I was hoping I'd get to work with him again, but he wasn't in my episode, but. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, a, well, speaking of, of actors, I just want, before we touch on some other things, wanted to chat to the, both of you to um, talk about how you, you like to work with actors, what's your process there and, and sort of um, um, things that you've sort of learned, you know, not to do, especially for kind of emerging directors and new directors when working with actors. It's just um, respecting their process and, and trying to, you know, to talk to your, your producer director and get as much insight into into what their needs are since your time with them is so limited. Uh, and, uh, and I think what Tucker just said, I think applies not just to comedy, but also to drama, just the, the never say no. I mean, sometimes actors just need to be heard, you know, and sometimes they come up with brilliant ideas and sometimes they, they aren't, you know, but if you don't hear them, if you don't mm -hmm. respect their contribution, um, yeah then it'll just come to burn you in the end. I mean, you, and plus you, you won't get as good of a product. You want, yeah. I mean, their contributions can be uh, amazing when they are fully invested in the same way that your DP's contributions, your, you know, it's, it's really a collaborative thing. And yes, you, you, you've got a vision and you're kind of helming this, but I think the more that you can take in from everybody who is creative, the better that the, the product will be. And also because everyone involved will be more invested in the choices. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. agree completely. It's like 
the, one of the biggest mistakes I made like as an early director was I was, I was scared. And so I held t to my plan really tight. I held on to my plan so tightly. And like if an actor veered out of the lanes of what that plan was, I just freaked, you know, I was like, holy <laughs> shit, you know, what's going on. And, and now, like, especially as, you know, you get into these better shows and you're working with like great, great cast. It's like, it's so important to allow, like one, come in with a strong idea of how you, you know, you want the scene blocked or how you want the scene to sort of play out or what, you know, in what way you want the scene to be, you know, the story to be told. But also then like what Roxanne was saying is like, like, you know, like I worked a lot like with John Voight the last five years and he comes in with crazy, crazy ideas, but you don't say no. What you do is you let him do it and you let him do it a bunch of times. So, cause it's much better for him to, to one, be respected with what he brought, but also to feel himself where it's not working. You know, so it's not yeah. just you always doing it. And it's much better to sort of try and understand what he was trying to get to, you know, even if it was the wrong way or, or, mm -hmm. or not a, maybe the wrong way is not the right word, but, an efficient way or whatever and or doesn't align with the story you're trying to tell and then sort of try and just winnow away the parts that don't work and then you feel like you're working together you know he's brought exactly. what he's brought and then he also feels like you're watching him and you're like trying to create a performance out of it rather than you know and and this happens a lot like I hate to say this, but like when writers are on set, because they have such a strong idea of what they wrote, you know? And they come in and they see an actor like going off the, the deep end in an early take. And it's like, holy shit, you've got to tell him he can't do that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and what you have to do is like, let him do it and then say, hey, let's, let's now go over here. You know, I really liked what you did here, but that seems to be taken away from what we wanted to do over here, you know? And, and, and it's that, it's that, confidence of allowing things to happen a little bit but because I, I i feel like the times when i've lost is when i when i pared things down too quickly you know or yeah. when i stepped in too quickly as a director you know or said too much like i don't yeah. like to talk to say that much you know i like yeah just come in and just like because you can give a little piece of direction at the beginning of a of a scene that will affect the whole performance you don't need to go through every line of the performance with notes you know mm -hmm. you don't want your actor thinking all the time you want them mm -hmm. you know performing you know that's very good advice for both of you yeah awesome thank you uh <laughs> carrie i like the giggle with the uh with the writers <laughs> I'm well, I, no, I have had that experience <laughs> because you do you have I, like yeah. like psychologically or yeah. anything that involves like a, a humor or I have a very specific idea about it and so I, I will sometimes see a take and my head will like blow up because there's, <laughs> there's like 25 things that didn't happen. Where <laughs> so you have to like temper that feeling and kind yeah. of communicate it in a calm way. But yeah, no, it's you. Well, that's more I'm, of a, of a, I think of, of a, when I was starting out, I didn't really understand the process that well. But yeah. um it's fun to um it's fun to collaborate totally yeah, yeah. how have you seen joy. that how have you seen your um yourself shift as a showrunner then from Bates to the morning show you mentioned you were sort of you were sort of new to that production side when you went into Bates and going into the morning show did you sort of feel like you had and wanted to step in more into into the production process or um, those decisions the, on set the, it's funny the parts of of production that I really inhabit are all the fictional parts. It's like, I love, I love the part where you're pretending, where it's like, what does this world look like? What being on the set when you're doing a scene, you know, um, the, what are the costumes? Like, I love the psychology of cost, like all that stuff. I just love doing the stuff that's like, um, you know, when you're doing the production meeting and it's like, how many cranes do we need? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm like so not, I'm out. not there for that. <laughs> fair. Uh, fair. But when you you know when so you much on the morning show, Carrie does so much heavy lifting. That show yeah. like oh, mammoth and she just did an incredible job. It's like it was a gargantuan task. It like, is, uh, it's it so is. impossible for you to even know, I think, or me to even know 
how much of a how much of a job and and i think this season again you had to rewrite the second season again right really yeah and what? there's huge what? personalities and lots of opinions and yeah you know. and also i mean and also because it's a show about the news like things change and you have yeah. to reflect that and you know yeah. you have to have a little bit of uh of foresight and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you have to go back in and Sorry, what I, were you saying? I do feel I find like that's part of why I love directing though too. Is like I feel like it's like sports. I feel like it's like you're up against the clock and there's all yeah. these moving parts and it's really a game, you know. And how yeah. much are you going to get out of this scene in such a short amount of time? And and like, are you there? Are you in the middle of it? Are you making it happen? Like, are you you know the point guard or whatever it is you know, or the coach or whatever it is? But you're like that's the fun of it. And when you get to play with really good players. Mm -hmm. then it's really fun and you have really good script you know because then the stakes are high but in some ways sometimes it's easier as a director like you know I sort of say to people sometimes you know when you're working with a really great actor you know your job is to put the camera in the right place you know it's like yeah you know but it's yeah. also not it's also to not be intimidated and to just have a conversation with them as if they're you know anyone else which they are and that's all they're looking for you know it's like you to be yeah. present, you know, and sort of see what they're looking for in a scene and, and know what you want out of it. Yeah, yeah. Roxanne, what was uh, what was your experience like working on, on the morning show? Well, it's always interesting working on a first season show because you know you're entering into a situation where everybody's still trying to, you know, figure it out and and uh, find their legs. And But that's what's exciting. I think you, it's sort of like what Tucker was saying, you kind of go in like, um, like this is part of the game, like, like, can I actually do this? Can I make, can I take all of this stuff? And, you know, and job positions are changing and people are, you know, suddenly the person you talked to yesterday is no longer there. And there's another one. That's definitely true. Yeah. So you just, but that's not unusual for a first season show. So like, and I've done several of them and you just kind of, you know that you, like you said, you're kind of walking into a little bit of a shit show. It kind of has to be <laughs> creativity, creating something is, is messy. It's just, yeah. it's messy. And sometimes you have to allow, you have to be okay with the mess. Yeah, I think that's, uh -huh. and that's, that's true. And it's important to say that. So it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it was a, a big show. You knew it was going to be messy going in. Carrie, for you, I imagine on a show, you know, that big where the stakes are so high that um, trust in your directors is so important. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah huge. yeah and and it's, um, especially when um you know if you're if you're not able to be on set as well mm -hmm. uh yeah i guess touching again on on the uh, on the relationship of showrunner and director i think it's just you know um having having gone through the for the first time myself last year the scariest thing for me when hiring was just sort of giving away my baby Right. To the, sort of how does that feel for you Carrie and and you know I guess how do you kind of I mean you have to, you can't I my the way that I work is I I do the best I can and I trust you know and I try to hire people that I think are really exciting and and great and fun and interesting so I I think of it I don't think of it so much as it's very rare you feel like, oh, I'm leaving my baby with a babysitter I don't know. It's <laughs> it's really more like you're leaving them with a really good friend that you know is gonna, you know, take your baby to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what you're hoping for, you know. It's, um, you hope that it'll be a good relationship. <laughs> do you feel differently when you work with the director for the first time, you know, before you've established oh, yeah. that kind of history oh, and yeah. trust? It, yeah, I mean, yeah. you definitely like circle each other and try to figure out like what that person's really about and like you always like look at dailies really closely yeah. you know um and i think you know there's there's there it's there's something really exciting that happens when you look at dailies and like it takes your breath away a little bit <laughs> That's yeah like a wonderful feeling and um and I really appreciate, I, I appreciate that relationship because I can't, I don't do that. Yeah. 
you know, I have a version of it in my head, but then when someone can put it on film and take my breath away, mm -hmm. that's really moving. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that's why I love directors. I love actors. Um, and I feel like it's a thing that we do together, you know? Absolutely. Um, before we jump into some questions from those watching, Kerry, I know we've got a, uh, some writers as well tuning in today. So I just wanted to ask you specifically, when, you're, when you've got a new show and you're putting together your writer's room, um, what do you look for in that team in terms of the, you know, uh, the different voices you're bringing in? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look for people with different voices. That's exactly what you look for. <laughs> um, you, you know, and depending on the needs of the show, like what, like if, like if you look at Bates, like I, you would want a person who does mystery. You would want a person who's really good at character drama. You would want someone funny, you know? Yeah. You, would, you would want maybe someone who was a horror writer, you know, yeah. um, there's all, and then also you want obviously diverse, diverse voices as well, you know? So I think that every room that you put together is like making a cocktail um, that is the show, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, cool, and do you sort of approach it, do you sort of, in terms of their work, it's sort of similar to how you look at directors in that you like uh, maybe something um, original they've created and and to see how they've worked on uh, on someone else's show like you like that mix no generally with writers i will just look at something original um okay. because okay. i'm more interested in what they're going to bring to my show or like to my vision and yeah. i know what that is so i'm like i don't care if they can do this other vision i want to see if they're going to bring something to this vision um and then the other thing that i'll say about writers is that some meetings are really important. There have been times when I have read a writer that I was urged to write and I was like, well, it's good. I didn't like love it, but then I'll meet them and I'll have, and I'll be like, I know I can work with this person. I know we, we are made of the same stuff. They're gonna yeah. get the show. So meetings are hugely important um, for me with, with meeting writers and knowing if I can, if we're gonna have like a chemistry. Yeah. How's that chemistry going over Zoom? It's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a role, like when you have a good writer's room, there's definitely an energy in it and a, and a, it's a, it's a, it's a they're my, they're a, a good writer's room is one of my favorite places in the world. They're, yeah. They're just, they're like, great. You can, you can talk about anything. You like talk about all, all, all your shit. You can <laughs> put it yeah. in, put it in a story. <laughs> you know, it's, it's great. Um, but yeah, Zoom is a little bit harder. And um, so not using it quite as much as in a room. Yeah. For sure. Um, cool. I'd love to jump into some other questions. One thing I wanted to ask you that I'm interested to know is um, we've seen, uh, a lot of uh, changes in recent years and how our industries evolved in terms of the type of stories that we're telling and how we're consuming those stories. What has excited you about that change and what would you, all of you like to see kind of happen to our industry in the next few years? I would just like to support um, new voices. No. I mean, I think that's, that's, I just think there's a, a void of, of different voices. Um, yeah. And in all, you know, across the board, I think in all the ways that you can think of that that would happen. I yeah. That's really um, hugely important. So, yeah. So you, you, are you sort of, you like uh, managers and agents reaching out with new talent for you to kind of keep an eye on? Yeah, and also just doing your own homework, you know, uh, reading yeah. people, hiring people that didn't necessarily, and I've always done this actually because <laughs> I shouldn't say this, I'm a sucker, but I'm not like a big Ivy League person. <laughs> you are I've now. You are like, now. <laughs> I like the resumes of people that are like, they went to six different colleges and then they did <laughs> for a year. I'm like, because I'm always thinking about, oh, this person wants to be a writer. So yeah. I, I like people who are have lived interesting lives and that often doesn't mean like you did everything the right way. It also means you can do everything the right way and still be super interesting. 
I don't mean that. I'm just saying that I think that sometimes it's good, especially like for entry level stuff when you can hire anybody, like search around a little bit, you know? Totally. Yeah. I, Find I think that's so important. Like whatever you're doing, whether you're writing or directing, like if you've had experiences in your life, you know, yes. outside of film, outside of this whole thing, like if you've traveled the world or you've, you know, had a really difficult childhood or you've, you know, immigrated yeah. from somewhere or whatever your story is, if you have a story and you yeah. have experiences, then you have something to draw on and then you have something to bring to the process that's unique. And, and, and then you look at, you know, like, cause we're all looking at the same story over and over again. You know, it's like, who's going to have a, a, a an, an interesting eye on it, you know, who's yeah. gonna, you know, have yeah. a on it that's really, you know, kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing that, that, that um, I had an acting teacher once say to a group of actors uh, that not every person you're going to play is an actor. So stop just hanging around actors. Go out and live. <laughs> 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 just live, get experience, and meet other people, you know, because those are the people you're playing. You're not just, you know. That's amazing. Actors. I love that's that. True. That's so funny. That's good. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, okay, let's take a I look here. Well, actually, I'm thinking, Carrie, speaking on that, uh, of the, the different experience, how do you feel about directors that went to film school? None. Oh, I've, 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 I, I mean, <laughs> I great. love directors who went to film school. I, I, have, I, I, don't, I didn't mean that at all. I really meant it more about like when you're, a lot of times when you're hiring entry level people on a show, like for your, your PA or whatever, your writer's assistant, and like the big agencies will send you a bunch of resumes that are like the kids of their what you know it's like yeah. it's just like a, it's a way it's a way it works so i just i tend to like to find people more on my own uh, and i've been really happy yeah. with it i've had i've found some really great people who did go on to work as writers um, yeah yeah but uh i i admire people who study film i wish i had i wish i could go back in time and do it because i really love film uh, and I learned yeah. so much about. I learned so much from Tucker, honestly, from working oh, with really? Tucker for all ah. years on base. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's fascinating, and I and I really, I, I, I mean, I love like a good student film. Yeah, yeah. they're exciting. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, please don't apologize. Um, so I, we've got a question here. Um, for Roxanne. Um, and. Um, Kerry, maybe you want to also touch upon this in, in your experience. Um, when we're talking about how the industry's changed right now, I know a lot of uh, female directors that have sort of endured sexism on set. Roxanne, hmm. do you, is there sort of, um, you know, do you see a big difference in, in your earlier career to now? And is that something that you've had to sort of uh, like endure on sets as well as a, as a female director? Um, you know, when I was just starting out, um, I knew that there weren't, there weren't hardly any female directors, but to be honest with you, I, I, it didn't, that didn't affect me. I just thought that the job that I wanted to do was tough and I, I would see male directors brought to their knees, you know? And so I've just figured I'm just, I don't know, it, it, to be really, really honest with you, it just didn't occur to me. I never sort of experienced, I think any more, um, anything, misogynist against me overtly that I didn't see them playing games with other directors that were new and coming in. And I just kind of thought, you know, the game excited me. I thought, this is tough, you know, it's tough mm -hmm. no matter who you are. And yeah. so I just, you know, but I did, I was told that at one point in an office, you know, we tried a woman and that, that didn't work, you know, and I think that <laughs> didn't tell me, I did call me and I ended up writing a very long letter back to that person. Um, you know. But that's probably the only, I mean, on sets, yes. I mean, you know, you're new, you're game. I mean, you, they're going to hunt you down and they, if they smell blood, man, it's just, but that's like for everybody. That's true for everybody though, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe more so for women. I don't know because I'm not one, but, it, but it's for everybody. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought. I so think sometimes you can confuse that as being that. I you agree. Know what I mean? <laughs> I completely agree with that. I, I just say, I just thought- I think there's so many women directors now, you know, the place where it's probably less so, but it's getting stronger is on the DP, in the DP ranks, you know? 
yeah. and now there's some really great women DPs working. But I think that was Better. a place of even more sexism than with the director. Yeah. Yeah. Sure it's, it's a, yeah, it's really interesting, but that's changing. It's getting yeah. better. Yeah, absolutely. And Carrie, um, as, a, as a writer and creator, have you seen that change? And, and did that sort of um, influence a lot of your writing on the morning show as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's funny because I started being a professional writer in the late 80s. And the way rooms were, the way the business was so different. But the funny thing is, at the time, I didn't really have anything else to compare it to. So I did kind of have that mindset of like, well, this is the job and I'm going to navigate it. I'm going to like, I'm going to just like, I'm going to get to where I need to go. And, you know, but was stuff going on that probably was not good? I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what a question here, Kerry. Um, how do you feel about hiring um, women who are uh, older, later in their careers, who haven't, who uh, couldn't get the shot at directing or writing episodes when they were younger? I would be excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Always good to hire older directors. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. just think it's fun to help somebody. Um, yes, <laughs> Tucker. I think it's fun to to help somebody transition into a new, you know, yeah. something that they didn't have time to do while they were raising their kids or what. I'm actually like trying to help a friend of mine do that now. Um, I think it's I think it's great. I think people yeah. have many lives, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a long question here. I'm just going to try and find the question um, for our directors. Um, um, we're speaking specifically on the later seasons of Bates and the great accomplishments filming the front stairs to the Bates house that was different than uh, anything that had come before it. Um, how much of a role does the producer play in making sure that the director uh, isn't shooting a scene the same way that's been done before? Um, and do you put, yeah, I guess that's, I think I found the question in, in, in that statement. Yeah, so I guess as a directors, what I'm reading into this is when you're shooting a scene and maybe in a location that's been, that's been used a lot, um, what's your relationship with your producer? And I guess in this case, I'm assuming directing producer uh, in terms of- I mean, of I, I tried never to step in, you know, in whatever director was setting up, I tried not to because I didn't feel like it was my place. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I like what Roxanne said, I think if you study the show, you know what the shots have been. And, and you, you know, and I guess there's, you know, this thing of always trying to do something new, but I've always looked at it as like, you know, what story are you telling and shoot it in the way that the story needs to be told and not in some unique way where it's never been shot before. But yeah, tell it and yeah. tell, tell the, you know, shoot the scene in the way that <clears throat> you know, the story is best told. And, and I think, you know, there was obviously a lot of things going on emotionally on the stairs at that point. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, lucky because Mark Freeboard built such a nice set that it was uh, yeah. oh, good to work. Go gorgeous yeah. set. Yeah. What, um, okay. That's, that's, that's interesting. Tucker, when would you, uh, or when have you sort of felt like um, you would need to sort of step in um on as, a producer director. It, as, as a producer director and, and same for you Carrie sort of when you sort of felt in that in the production process that you need to that you need to uh, step in I mean I step in all the time in terms of just trying to support and you know help as much as I can um, you know the only times I've really had to step in I guess you're saying in terms of like I don't know change a direction of something or something is when somebody was really struggling, but that hasn't happened very often. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess it's sort of in re yeah, relation to sort of... I mean, um, I guess if, if I, wa and this doesn't happen that often, but if I watched the first dailies of a director, a new director, and I thought the scenes were really missing, like the emotional nuancing, <coughs> I think right. that I would probably try to communicate more before scene scenes were filmed. Mm -hmm. Or maybe talk to the actors. 
<laughs> you yeah. know, or just be like, here's what I'm going for in this, you know, but that doesn't happen very often. I think it's different too, in my eyes as a writer, because I always like having a writer on set because they were reminding me of things that I'm not thinking about. Or sometimes I have yeah. an idea of a scene that's going, that's missing a piece of what was in the scene. And like, I yeah. love having somebody who steps in and goes, hey, you know, there's this moment here that you might be missing. And sometimes I'll look over my shoulder like, what do you tell, you know, but then like a t couple takes in, I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, there's that beast, they're right, you know, and yeah, yeah. really then try and find it, you know. Um, you know, just like if you walk up to an actor, sometimes you give a piece of direction, they would be like, you know, fuck you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but then a couple takes into it, you know, they're actually, they've processed it and, and it's kind of sinking in a little bit. Um, yeah. But I like, I mean, that's the collaborative part of it, but uh, yeah. Um, question here what um as for all of you um what would be for our directors what would be a bad experience you've had working with a showrunner um and obviously not carrie um and then what would be a great <laughs> one and then carrie for, for, and then carrie for you uh the same but uh with with the directors on on any project that you've worked with any sort of uh mm -hmm. terrible experiences you can you can remember and and then and then a great experience but i mean i re i remember um when i was very young and i, I had a, some pilots made and feeling like the director did not value me mm -hmm. and that was hard i suppose especially because i was so young and, and very inexperienced and it was it was easy to think oh i'm wrong you know right. um so that was that was never pleasant um i think that as i become more successful that doesn't happen you know but i think like <laughs> try to you know i would just say like try to like if you are if you like the script enough to be directing it try to uh believe that the writer knows something about what they're going for you know mm -hmm. and, and be open to that but um you know it, it really is about it's about people that either are open to letting you in and playing and people that either because they're battle scarred and they don't want it like they do they just don't they don't want to you know they the that kind of sucks but it's really to me the great relationships are they're, they're open and they want to play cool awesome yeah roxanne tucker what do you uh any any uh of your own stories there on the other side of the coin i think just wanting to play i mean that's that's just a huge thing we forget with all the seriousness of production that we're ultimately there to play you know yeah. and 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 i think sometimes it's easy to forget that and sometimes i'll even write myself little post-it <laughs> sort of like I'll open it and I'll you know it'll be like you know something about just remembering you know and one of my yeah. favorite that my husband gave me once is feel the fear and do it anyway you know and it was yeah. oh, that's you, a great you know, one it, I love it because it's this sort of like you go it's okay to be okay, yep. I'm a little scared here I'm a little whatever but it's okay yeah. to feel it and just do it you know that's what it's okay. all about yeah 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 that was the motto on my last show, keep it fun. And, and my DP had it engraved on a, a pen for me. And it's a nice thing to remind us every day, right? Because oh, yeah. sometimes it feels like the world's on your shoulders, but then you're like, hey, we're here to, we're here to make entertainment. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, cool. So Roxanne, do you feel sort of like when you're in the, I guess it's not so much a, a specific story, but you feel like when you're in an environment where you can, play is when you you know the best product comes out have there been times where that's sort of been shut down and and that really you know kind of impacts the final the final product it can but it's sort of your responsibility to create that environment i mean director yeah. whether you're an episodic director or the producer director you're very powerful on a set and if you come in kind of bringing in your baggage it's going to be a different set than if you come with wanting to play right because you'll inspire the people around you to do their best for you and for yeah. themselves. Yeah. And make people feel safe too, which I think is a huge part of directing. I love your dog. There we go. We got <laughs> a, we, 
Um, we have an, we have another guest joining us. Who's this? Yes, Rue. Um, I, you know, I had a bad experience recently, about three years ago, on a show um, where the producer, the showrunner, wanted really to direct all the episodes. You oh. know, and so you're there on yeah. set um, as the director, but everybody's looking another way. You know, mm. and this one in particular was really difficult because they had one of those, you know, voices of God, you know, like a microphone by the monitor and like in the middle of scenes would be talking to the actors and in the middle of the scenes would be giving direction. And, you know, by day three, like I turned to my assistant and I said, you know, cause I was ready to quit. And, and I just said, you know, it's your job to make sure I don't get fired or get quit. I just wanted to make it through the episode. Um, because I knew the guy who was following me, the next director, and I thought if I quit, and then he stepped in and it went well, I would look really bad. <laughs> and, and so then he came in after me, and on day three, he quit. So <laughs> oh, no. I, was like, I was like, shit, I'm such a, I'm such a pussy. I should have like, quit, you know? But I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I finished the job, because that's like Roxanne said, that's kind of your job. Yeah. But um, it was just horrible, you know? But, you know, yeah. you can't, you, like, you can't, like, if someone's constantly telling you, you know, do this, do this, do this, then all of a sudden you shut down. It's like, well, you know, what am I here for, you know? And there's nothing worse than going out to an actor and delivering direction from a writer that you haven't processed yourself because they know right yeah. away that it's not your, it's not your idea. It's not your direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, so, and when they challenge you, you won't know how to defend it because it's not your idea. And then you look like an idiot. You look like the pawn of somebody else and not a director. Yeah, it's a it's a such a difficult situation to be in. And I've had a similar a similar situation. And how do you even navigate that on set? You know, that's sort of and and again, it touches upon the back to the that unique relationship that a, a director and a showrunner has. It is about uh, trust and it's about collaboration and it's about you know um, you being able to bring your creativity as a director to work with the vision of the showrunner and the creator um, and it's it's I think it's, it's sometimes tough to find that 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 balance and 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 get there and that's where it just it's all about that um, communication and collaboration right yeah, yeah um, I mean, also, that's just so disrespectful for someone to do that to a director. It's like, I don't know how you, how do you expect they're going to do their job after that? How do you yeah. expect the crew is going to respect them or anyone is like you, it's, you might as well just shoot them. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, there's such an una unawareness there, isn't there? That you would, that's probably it's not really even aware weird. of what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. It really, it feels like, um, I don't know. I mean, I know there are people like that. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to avoid those shows. That's, yeah. the best, that's the best thing to do. Well, you three have shared uh, so many wonderful tips and advice and stories. And um, I know I have, and I'm sure all of our guests have got so much out of it. Um, I want to thank you so much for your time uh, today. And... Um, yeah, uh, before I close it, there is anything that either uh, any of you want to say before I sort of uh, sign off? Go, uh, go just, I just am so appreciative to both of these people um, for having worked with me and being, <laughs> you know, I am. I, you guys are great. And um, I feel really lucky that I get to work with you guys. Yeah, well, I look at, I mean, it's, yeah been working really well the last few shows and I'm looking forward to see what the three of you get up to next that's for sure yes and congratulations again on the new show uh Carrie I'm looking forward to the next season thank you and <laughs> um and thanks everyone for uh, uh tuning in and um just want to remind everyone that you can check out directors.ca which is uh, our database where you can find all of our uh, BC directors here working now and you can follow us on social at Watch EGC. Cool. Thank you so much, everybody. It's been so great chatting to you. It's been nice chatting with you, too. Carrie, back to great to see you guys. Yeah, good to see Bye. you, Roxanne and Carrie. Cool. Take care, everyone. All right, you too. Bye.